When I enrolled in graduate school at the Catholic Theological Union back in 2014, the first class I took was called Black Spirituality. I was looking forward to this new chapter in my life, going back to school after over 20 years of being in a classroom. But I had no idea that I would be moved and pushed out of my comfort zone. I am somewhat of an introvert. I don't like taking pictures and I definitely don't like speaking in front of people. But one of the first assignments we were given was to lead the class in prayer. I was mortified. I didn't know how I would pull this off. I was mad that I decided to go back to school. I was mad at my professor. Not literally mad, but I truly had a shaking my head moment. I wasn't so concerned with coming up with a prayer. It was the performance that I was concerned about. But the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 2, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word, be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince reprimand, and courage through all patience and teaching. Having to leave prayer in front of a group of strangers was extremely inconvenient, but it was at that moment that I was called to proclaim the word. It was at that moment that I had an encounter with Jesus. I was asked to do something that I didn't feel comfortable doing, but my encounter with Jesus reminded me to seek him first and everything else would follow. The scripture goes on to say, but you be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardship, perform the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Although that was at the beginning of my time in ministry, I accepted the hardship that I was confronted with. I was going to perform the work of an evangelist, and I would fulfill my ministry. Not only in that moment, but ever since then. Not only was I able to lead my class in prayer, I have articulated my thoughts in various class discussions. I have led class as an assignment for one of my professors. I have led a remembrance event for Dr. King. I have even spoken at several Seven Last Words events and I have recorded videos explaining scripture. The inconvenience of it all diminished as the call to evangelize grew stronger and stronger in my heart. Think again about the Samaritan woman that Jesus met at the well in John chapter four. He basically told her that she was an immoral woman, yet this was their first time meeting. That didn't stop her from going to town to testify that he told me all that I ever did. Based on her testimony, the people in town were moved to possibly go and have a similar encounter with Jesus. When we truly know Jesus and all of the radically hospitable things he's done, we can't keep that to ourselves. We should all be moved, just like the Samaritan woman, to tell everyone about our encounters with Jesus, our call to evangelize as baptized believers. So what about you? After you leave church, do you go out to tell anyone what you heard or learned at mass? Do you listen to praise and worship music and find yourself swaying from side to side because the lyrics are speaking to you? And if that happens, do you share that song or those lyrics with someone else? We are in the habit of sharing pictures of our kids, our pets, even our meals on social media, but do we use our social media to share the good news? Father Matt told us in his homily a couple of weeks ago that we should be the disciple willing to reach out to one another because we all believe in the purpose that God created us all for. He said that we shouldn't take our eyes off of Jesus and lose sight of what God says is possible. That is how we can become a people of radical hospitality. That is how we can become more like Jesus. Will you allow yourself to be used to share the good news and invite others to an encounter with Jesus? Thank you.